Students, in the last class we have seen what is stress and what are the assumptions to solve the trust problems. In this class we will see the steps to solve the trust problems. The first step is to modeling. Here what we need to do like uh, this is our trust element. This is our trust element. It has uh, this is our trust element. It has two nodes node 192 one, and each node has two displacement in the x and y direction and here in x and y direction so this is given by u1 u2 and here u3 u4 clear that's what i have written he, uh, that's what we you can see here this is nothing but first node this is second node each node has two displacement u1 u2 u3 u4 this is how we do the modeling modeling in the sense we need to define the number of nodes number of displacement and number of forces uh, this is the example which we have seen here as we know that the stress is two force member in the sense each node has two degree of freedom next once we do that the second step is to define the direction cosines what is this direction cosines we will see in the further classes you just know you just understand here L is nothing but L and M is nothing but direction cosines which are the elements of stiffness matrix which we can calculate by using x2 minus x1 divided by length of the element y2 minus y1 divided by length of element these x1 x2 and y1 y2 are nothing but coordinates of each node which we need which we have defined over here if for example this is our uh, two bars truss element this is this is two bar truss element we have this is first element and this is the second element and first element is connected between node 192 second element is connected between node 2 and 3 and this uh, first node has displacement u1 second node has displacement u2 and uh, the second node has displacement u3 u4 third node u5 u6 the length of first element is 100 mm the length of fourth, second element is 250 mm now first we need to form the nodal connectivity table nodal connectivity table here you can see uh, here you need to write node here this is nothing but coordinates coordinates means x and y what we have done here for this type of problem uh, first we have taken this as reference this is our reference means the node 1 is the reference from node 1 is reference in the sense x is 0 x is 0 and y is 0 for node 1 and for node 2 here we have node 2 it is at a distance of 50 mm in the x axis and it is a distance of 50 mm from the y axis so i can write for node 2 i can write x is equal to 50 y x is equal to 50 and y is equal to 50 similarly if you see uh, the node 3 here we have node 3 it is at a distance of 300 from the reference point and it is a distance of 50 mm from the re reference point so i can write here x is equal to for for node 3 x is equal to 300 and y is equal to 50 so these all things are tabulated over here for first node we have taken reference so it is 0 0 that means x is 0 y is 0 In the second node second node it is at a distance of 50 mm from the reference point along the x axis and it is uh, the second node it is at a distance of 50 mm from the reference point along the y axis similarly you can see 350 because third node is at a distance of 300 from the reference point and it is a at a distance of 50 mm in the y direction from the reference point these are nothing but uh, the, these are nothing but x1 x2 x3 and these are nothing but y1 y2 y3 once we define nodal connectivity table next we need to define the uh, elemental connectivity table we need to define the elemental connectivity table here what we have done here serial number first first and second uh, first serial number we have first element 
first element which you can see this is our first element this is our first element and this element is connected by the node 1 9 2 and the length of element is 100 mm we have written length of element and these direction cosines we need to define what are these direction cosines that is, that is nothing but L and M this we can define here you can see L L is nothing but the direction cosines which is equal to x2 minus x1 divided by length of the element what is x2 here x2 is nothing but this one is our x1 this is our x2 so x2 is nothing but 50 minus 0 50 minus 0 divided by length of first element is 100 which is equal to 0 0.5 similarly L, m is nothing but direction cosines which we defined u y2 minus y1 y2 is nothing but 50 y1 is 0 so you will get uh, divided by length of the element is 100 if you simplify you will get 0.5 similarly we need to define now the that's what we have written direction cosine is 0 0.5 0 0.5 similarly we need to define the second element second element is connected between node 2 and 3 which you can see here this node this element is connected between node 2 and 3 and the length of element is 250 the length of element is 250 which we have written here once we define the, these things next we need to de determine the direction cosines l and m that you can see here here uh, this is nothing but x1 x2 x3 the for second element what we do we write x, x3 minus x2 divided by length of the element this is our x3 300 minus x2 is 50 300 minus 50 the length of the element is 250 if you simplify you will get one and similarly if you calculate m where m is nothing but direction cosines which is nothing but y3 minus y2 divided by length of element it becomes zero if you simplify you will get, get zero those data we have tabulated over here once you, we do this next step is to formulating the stiffness matrix stiffness matrix for the truss element is given by cross uh, k is equal to k is nothing but stiffness matrix k is nothing but stiffness matrix where a into e divided by l into this matrix this is we need to derive in the next class i will show you how to derive this stiffness matrix so uh, this is the as similar to bar element which we have a into e by l here these nothing these are l and m l and m are nothing but direction cosines how to remember this matrix is very simple first we need to write the diagonal matrix diagonal elements l square m square l square m square once you write that the next step is you need to write this diagonal here we have lm minus lm lm once you write that the next step is to you need to write this diagonal so this is minus m l square minus m square next we have last one is minus l square minus lm so this is how you need to remember since you know that stiffness matrix is a symmetric matrix the whatever the element we have written here written the same matrix we have here same matrix we have here same elements we have here clear this is uh, this is what about this is all about the stiffness matrix once we define the nodal connectivity data and the elemental connectivity data next we need to define the stiffness matrix this is the stiffness matrix for the truss element once we define this next is to define the global stiffness matrix the global stiffness is nothing but adding the stiffness matrix for each element which we can write k1 plus k2 next we have we need to define global displacement vector how many of uh, like uh, we have displacement u1 u2 u3 u4 these are the displacements for each node next we have global load vector these are nothing but the load which is acting in the each node once once we define this next step is to apply the boundary condition where usually in the truss problem we do we apply the elimination approach method since it is easy to calculate the displacement if you go for the penalty method we have many num like few number of uh, equation we'll get to solve those number of equation it takes time so uh, it is 
like it is recommended to use this elimination approach method to calculate the uh, displacements once we do like once we apply the boundary condition we will get the displacements u1 u2 u3 once we get that the next step is to determine the stresses stresses for the truss element can be determined by using this formula stress is equal to Young's modulus divided by length of the element minus l minus m l m here we have u1 u2 u3 u4 in the truss problem we usually have 4 by 4 matrix because as we know that this is the truss and this is connected between two nodes and each node has two degree of freedom means it has u1 u2 displacement in one the one node and it has displacement u3 u4 in the second node since we have four displacement we get four by four matrix similarly here we have four matrix four four by one matrix clear this is how we need to determine the stresses these are the steps which are involved to calculate the uh, problems in the truss if you have any doubt regarding this you comment below so that i can answer for this thank you